Hello folks. Well, I've been asked by one of the scout groups locally to come down and do a fire lighting demo. And uh, before I head down there, I'm going to make some char cloth, so I thought I'd do a short video on that. Also as something for them to, to refer to after the fact. So I'm just going to go through some of this. It's a pretty basic thing. It's for the, uh, for the younger heads more than the older heads, but here we go. So I'm going to make some char cloth on my alcohol stove this morning. So char cloth is a natural fibre, usually cotton, but it can be linen or even vegetable fibre. I've charred this stuff previously quite successfully. This is the, the mat from coconut or um, banana, like a dried mat. Um, I've got three, these are all cotton, but I've got three sort of different types. This is like a loosely woven cotton, which I find is um, very good. That's like one of my favourites. This is um, a thin cotton, such as pillowcases. Cotton pillowcases are, are made from. I particularly like that one. I find that uh, catches a spark very easily. And some people really like terry toweling because of the, the furry business on it. They, they feel that catches a spark better. Well, I haven't had enormous success with that, but uh, maybe I just haven't explored it. Fully. So there's, there are the materials. Um, and the idea is to, essentially, you bring them up to a temperature to where they would normally burn, but in the absence of oxygen. So they actually char. The resultant product is char cloth, and um, that takes a spark very easily. Um, in order to bring them up to temperature, in the absence of oxygen, they're put in an airtight, heat-resistant container. And uh, this is what I use here. This is a, an old, I think it was a biscuits tin or something, but it's a nice size for me. Um, you can use all sorts of other tins. There's, this is a car polish tin, which would be ideal. There's the Altoids tin. That's a classic there, and you can even use, um, you know, shoe polish tins. You can get those in larger sizes, which are handier. Something like this tin, you can see it has a seal on it. Um, if you tried to char cloth in this, as it is, uh, the gases would build up inside and pop the lid off. And then, you know, the whole system is unsuccessful. So, people usually just punch a hole in the top there, just a small hole just to allow the gases to escape. With my um, my tin, you can see the hinges aren't, there's no seal on the hinges there, so I don't have to punch a hole in that. And this dump doubles as my uh, tinder box anyway. Um, same with the boot polish tin. You'd have to put a little bit of a hole in it, or perhaps not fit the lid properly when you did it. So the idea is, Char cloth goes inside the tin. I'll put my my favourite on the bottom. And my next favourite on the top. <clears throat> and then um, it goes on the fire. You can do it on a campfire. I'm going to do it on my alcohol stove this morning. So here we go. goes the tin and now we wait you see it's starting to gas off now so I'm making the char cloth for flint and steel demo I don't have a true steel you can get them on on Amazon and eBay and all over uh, but what I use is, is a broken file we got in the bargain bucket in the, in the local hardware, which I keep in my kit now. I leave, it's a triangular file, I leave two of the sides as they are because I can touch up the edge on my bush knife. Uh, but the third side is, as you can see, relatively smooth. You can see what I've been striking on that, and that's what I use. Um, the reason I chose this is because it's high carbon steel and it's been hardened but not tempered. So it's, 
It's very brittle, that's why it was in the bargain bucket, because it broke as a file, but that's, that's a good thing, it means it's, it's hard enough to produce a spark once you strike it against the flint. Here's a piece of flint, this is a piece of English flint that I had somebody bring out for me. You can't get true flint, I don't think, anywhere in the Americas. You can get chert, which is the same family, and which is hard enough to do the job, but flint is especially hard. Um, locally you can use quartzite, which is hard enough to drive a spark off of steel. So I'm going to see if I can do this where, where you can see it. This is how I, I do mine here. Look. I can get you in picture. Find a sharp piece on the on the flint itself. I don't know whether you can so I can stand in front of it. I think you can see there that it's throwing sparks quite nicely. And of course the idea is to throw the sparks onto the char cloth. And because um, the cotton has been carbonised, it catches that spark very easily. You can turn that into the ember, into an ember, and then you turn the ember with a little bit of um, trickery, with a little bit of skill, you can turn the ember into a flame. All right, so my alcohol stove has gone out. I've allowed the tin to cool, to a certain extent anyway. If you open the tin while it's still hot enough it may spontaneously combust and then you'll lose everything that you've been trying to make. But there you can see that how small that, that goes down. There's the stuff with the open weave which I especially like and here is the Here's the pillowcase, and you can see that this hasn't charred completely, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing. I've got a funny feeling that actually some of this had nylon in it. You can see how it's gone a little bit chewy on the sides there. I'll see how it goes. But, but anyway, the incompletely um, carbonized stuff, where that edge, where the carbonized stuff meets the stuff that hasn't quite been carbonized, that seems to be especially good if you fluff that up for catching a spark. Well let's give it a go, let's try some. Yeah. Alright, sorry about the background noise in the last one, there's some construction going on next door. So, let's see if we can't get this thing rolling. There's a bit of my favourite type of char cloth there, and the flint. A number of different ways of doing this, but I wrap the, the flint in the char cloth so that the edge, there's two edges presented to the sharp piece on the flint that I'm going to strike and then let's see what happens you guys see it? Well, it's going like a good one there so well that's busy Here's my makeshift tender bundle for demonstration purposes there, look, I've got, I've actually got some dryer lint and some jute twine on top of a piece of the uncharred cloth there and some waste paper. You can see this is going quite merrily, it's very, very keen to do its job. I'm going to put that in there very carefully fold it in without without crushing the ember see if I can do it so that you guys can see what's happening You see as you blow on it, the ember burns hotter and hotter until it gets to the temperature to where it can ignite the tinder bundle around it. You should put your back to the wind while you do this, so you don't choke.
there it is. It doesn't matter how many times you do it, it always feels good. And obviously that would go into your kindling first. And your carefully prepared previously um, fire side. And that's it. If you found it useful, leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.